the standing in his presence. Yes. And the presence of the Lord falls on this place. And every heart is tuned to him. Yes. That's where I want to go. We've got, we've got to go there. And uh, you all familiar with this song? Yes. Okay, all right. We're going to do it next Sunday. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. And the song is easy. I mean, like, it's not musically complicated, you know what I mean? I told it to uh, Mary and Matt, and we were practicing just a little bit. Uh, in just a, just a minute, they picked it up and ran with it.
to come and lay down their lives for Allah. And people are accepting the challenge. Okay? Um, I find it amazing that they, they just put it to them straight. Come and give your all for Allah. And, and they don't have the Holy Spirit working in them. Helping to do that, but, but we do. Admittedly, I believe they have another spirit working with them. They go willingly and become soldiers for Allah. They follow the Quran wholeheartedly. Muslim organizations, uh, especially here in the United States, um, they they uh, give away the Quran. I got I got sent uh, in the mail. I wound up in the mailbox here a beautifully bound copy of the Quran. I was I was amazed. Um, um, I said I I know something about buying books. I'm you know I'm sort of a book guy. Sort of. Um, and I said, this book must have cost $50. It was a beautifully bound hard, about this thick, hardback copy. I got it in there. I should have brought a copy. Had to for this. And uh, they said that the church is all over the place. Lots of money involved. They are wholeheartedly doing what they do. And as I was speaking about these young people who are being called and challenged by ISIS to come and lay down their lives for Allah, it's this misguided passion that compels them to kill people and even put off their heads down. And now we're all raised to be decent people, aren't we? Okay, we're taught from the time we're little, you know, uh, um, don't fight and quarrel and act ugly and, you know, you know all this stuff you, that we, you got looking for when you were little. You know what I mean? Because as pa our parents trained us to be decent people. Okay. Um, and, I, and I just want to say, how much they have to go against to do what they do to answer this call. <clears throat> well, I am thankful that the Lord calls us to come and give our all for Him. And He doesn't tell us to hurt other people. Jesus said, Love your enemies. Muhammad said, Cut off their heads. Okay, there's a real difference there. <laughs> A real difference, big difference. But let me tell you quickly that the true and living God is calling us to have a, a passion for Him, for Him, that compels us to be willing to lay down our lives. For him, and as the song said over and over again, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Again, Mel Gibson made the, the movie called The Passion of the Christ. And uh, today we're going to do the movie, The Passion for the Christ. Uh, give me just a second. Because I, I, I got to do that. Okay, now, back to where we were. I can't stand the idea going all day, all day. Okay? That drives me crazy. 
and you've got a mic in your head, it goes through the sound system. Let's go to, as we look at this idea of having passion for the Christ, I think it is best seen by, by viewing its contrast, not having passion for Christ, um, and not having passion for Christ held by people who think they do have a passion for Christ, okay? That's where you're able to see the contrast and, um, and God, in his great wisdom, um, makes it plain. We're going to the third chapter of the book of Revelation, where Jesus is talking to the church in Laodicea. And uh, these letters to the churches, the seven churches in Asia there that are in the first few chapters of Revelation, uh, they always scare me a little bit because each letter starts to the angel of the church in, okay, and uh, the, when it says the, the angel of the church, uh, that is sort of gracious biblical language that, that means the pastor, okay, angel that also means messenger. And I said, Lord, uh, you, um, you, you address all of these letters to the pastor. It, it just speaks of the awesome responsibility. That's, that's why I find it a little scary. Mm -hmm. right. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write, these are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that your deeds are neither cold nor hot, or, or hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You see, they had lost their passion for God. And now God calls them lukewarm. And, and he, he says this to the church in Laodicea because Laodicea was known for this, this cold, having these cold, refreshing springs where the drinking water was cold and pure and beautiful. And, uh, and, and these hot springs where people can, can, can sit in a nap sort of a natural hot tub full of minerals and stuff. And he uses this analogy because that's what Laodicea is, is known for in, in its region. He says, you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. But people who don't know the Lord, and they're just cold, there's greater hope for them to come to the Lord. They had lost their passion for God. And they're called lukewarm, which means it's tepid, just so-so. And we see that God finds that unappealing. He says, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Now, I find this very interesting. What God, what they say about themselves and what God says about them, okay? You see a tremendous contrast there. You say, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. So from their own perspective, they were doing okay. From their own perspective, they were comfortable. 
but they didn't realize that from God's perspective they were messed up. It appears that in their comfort they had lost their passion. Why do people lose their passion? Excuse me. Why do Christians lose their passion for Christ when they get comfortable? We'll talk. That's a question. And I want to answer that in just a minute. <coughs> it is this messed up state that has allowed the world and its twisted philosophies to, to invade the church today. People being comfortable and losing their passion for Christ. Much of the, much of the church in America has lost its passion for Jesus. We can visit churches that are just dead. No passion for Jesus. There are churches that are have great religious form, but no presence of the Lord. Now, I'm not picking on them. I'm not up here throwing stones. But I'm saying, we must have a passion for Christ. Now, God called them lukewarm, these Laodiceans. What makes a Christian lukewarm? Well, there may be a number of things, but let me suggest this one to you. Uh, misplaced priorities. Now, that can cover a lot. With the labor scenes, I believe that their focus was on themselves and on their own pursuits, on their own comfort. So, the, so the, it came to the point when they have achieved some of their goals because their pursuits, they were about their own pursuits. And they got comfortable. They, say that, they said that they were okay. See, our passion must be fueled by the desire to know Jesus himself. Can you, let me say this again. Our passion for the Lord must be fueled by our desire to know Jesus himself. See, Jesus is the goal, not his blessings. Get that. That's actually a pagan mentality. Uh, just seek the Lord for, for his blessings. Seek, seek your God for, for what your God will do for you. You see, your seeking God is all about you. And one of the greatest revelations that you'll ever have in the Lord is that He is the goal. Not the things that He gives. If the blessings are the goal, hear this, if, if God's blessings are your goal, once you have them, your need for his person gets placed to the back, on the back burner. And it begins to cool off. See, that, I think that's what took them to the place that they're in. It's, it's wonderful to have God's blessings. Okay, um, I am the first one to say I enjoy God's blessing. I'm the first one. Okay? I think God blessed, has blessed me so mightily. Okay? And uh, I don't make big money. And there's not big money in the past of y'all, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but I've had people look at me and think I was rich. That's just because the Lord takes care of me. 
He does. When we go on vacation, guess where we're going? We're going to a vacation resort in the Poconos. Amen. Okay. Where, where, where most of y'all can't afford to go. <laughs> okay, and you know how I know how we're going? We got some friends down south who who bought a timeshare in one of these ritzy vacation resorts. Okay, they own it. They haven't been there in 10 years. Ain't think about it. And uh, they said, oh, we got a good place in the world. You want to go? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like to go. OK, well, I'll, I'll, I'll call him out there and set it up. And uh, you, you, can just, you can just go. How much? Oh, no, no charge. You can go. OK. OK, so the, the guy who, who couldn't afford the motel room over there on 8 Mile, going to the Poconos, to the vacation resort for free. Yeah. Okay, now that's because the Lord just said, I ah, give it to him. Okay. And um, we'll see y'all when you get back. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just telling you this because the Lord takes care of us. Yes. He blesses us. Yes. He's good. Yes. Anybody who says God ain't good don't have a clue. Yes. They don't know my Jesus. Yes. 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 Not everybody who says they know him is telling the truth. Some people think they know him. Yes. They don't have a clue. God is good. Yes. Yes. And he takes care of us. Yes. And he blesses us. Yes. 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 I come up with stuff before that was, that, that was necessary, that was very needed. And uh, people said, wow, where'd you get that? I said, how about that? You cry yourself for 50 cents. <laughs> because God yes. was with me. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a cool thing to have God with you when you go yard sailing. Yes. OK? All right? The Lord takes care of us. If the blessing is the goal, once you have them, your need for his person is diminished. It's placed on the back burner. Gets cool off. You see, and, 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 and these thoughts that I'm trying to get ingrained into our thinking helps us understand what Jesus was saying in the Sermon on the Mount in the sixth chapter of Matthew when he said things like, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. See? God likes giving you stuff. Don't make the stuff, don't make the blessings the goal. Make him the goal. Jesus is the goal. And, and I, you begin to see this, once, you, once your eyes are open to this, you begin to see it all through scripture. I, I, I found one of the first instances of it in, in the book of Genesis, where God is talking to, um, to Abram or Abraham before he became Abraham. His name is Abram. So after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. You see, that's God's intention and has been his, been his intention all along. That his 
The people that are called by his name, filled with his spirit, washed in the blood of the Lamb. See him as the reward. Now, let's go back in our thinking to what we were, we were reading there in the third chapter of the book of Revelations, where we're talking about uh, the church of the lay of the sea. We left off at verse 17. And as uh, God told them, you say you're rich, but I and I have, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, <coughs> pitiful, <laughs> poor, blind, and naked. I said, wow, God. Tell me how you really feel. He called them wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. They probably looked, at, looked around at themselves and at each other and said, who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> and Again, their perspective versus God's perspective. Uh, God says, you're not hot or cold, you're lukewarm. I find that very unappealing. <coughs> then he goes on to say in the very next verse, verse 18, I counsel you <coughs> to buy from me. Boy, that's, that jumps off the page at me. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and, clo and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see those whom I, I love I rebuke and discipline so be earnest and repent Looking at this verse 18, God says, I counsel you to buy from me. He didn't say go buy, really go out and get yourself something that's worth, worthwhile. He said get it from me. That's important. Don't miss that. He's the only one who has what's really precious. And that's why he would say get it from me. By his gold, and he said it was refined in the fire. His gold that is pure, his gold that is solid, his gold that doesn't corrode. He said to buy white clothes. And uh, why white clothes? Because that's symbolic language. And you see the answer to that in the 19th chapter of the Revelation. It says, fine linen, bright and clean, was given to, the, given to her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. That, that, that white clothes, the righteous acts. Now, so it, it tends to say, since they were told to buy from the Lord white clothing, that their deeds were not righteous. They needed to be clothed with the righteous acts of the saints. When we become lukewarm, that helps us, see this, this helps us to understand that when, when we become lukewarm, it becomes easier to sin. Sin slips into our lives. It becomes easier to put up with sin, to tolerate sin, to wink at sin when we see it, to make excuses for it. And he said, by eye salves, 
so you can put it on your eyes so that you can see it. He told them that they were blind. In other words, they were unable to see as they ought, which is from God's perspective. And you might say that they were blinded by their lukewarmness. They were blinded by their messed up pursuits, their, their wrong priorities. Your great priority in life is not making a buck. However, money is necessary. No one denies that. Serve God and he'll provide a way. Serve God and he'll open the doors for you to make a living. Amen? Amen? You don't have to do wrong to get God's blessing. People say, well, you, you, you heard folks say that out here in the neighborhood, well, I, I got to do what I got to do. <laughs> and then they wonder why they get locked up. Because God's got to do what he's got to do. <laughs> okay? Judge got to do what she's got to do. Yeah. I, I say she got to do I've seen a lot of female judges lately. A female judge can pronounce sentence, sentence on you just as well as the male judge. The bottom line is that what, I, what I'm trying to say is <coughs> seek God first. Amen. Seek God first. Now, I guess I'll back this up a little bit. He says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. So, this begs the question, repent of what? Repent for what? For letting their priorities get out of whack. For, for seeking blessings instead of the blessing. When you do that, your worship is out of whack. You hear that? Oh Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Are you really just saying, I, I like the stuff? I like the blessings. Oh Lord, bless us, bless me. You know, see, all I am I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. See, we give ourselves him to him. Or I give myself away as the song goes. Because he is the goal. And if he's not the goal, repentance is in order, dear one. So, the question is, where are you in this story? How is your passion for Christ? Is it fading or cooling off? Have you lost it? Maybe you've never had it. Passion for Christ is often the difference between having a religion and having a relationship with the true and living God. What are your priorities? Is serving Jesus with a whole heart the most important thing in your life? It is mine. And, that, and, and even as I say that, I, I say, Lord, help me be wholehearted. 
because I, I see where I'm not. But Lord, that's what I want. All I want is shoes, as the song said. All I want is shoes. I encourage and challenge you to lay your lives at his feet so that he can use them. I give it to you straight. Lay your lives at his feet. That's where the best life is. Life that is controlled by him. Life that is given to honor him. That's worship. Okay? Paul says in Romans chapter 12, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. I urge you because God is so good. I urge you because God loves you so much and has so much love and concern and mercy for you. To offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Get that it's, it's, it's holy and pleasing to God. Versus, I'm about to spit you out. Unpleasing. Seek him. Seek to be owned by him. He owns you because you gave it all to him. And now I freely admit, when you say, yes, this is what I want, you won't know how to give it all to him. But he'll teach you. For each of, for each of us, it's all a little different what giving it all to him means. But I encourage you to stop playing church. Stop messing around with dibbling and dabbling with your faith and become soldiers, servants of the Most High God. You know, mighty angels identify themselves as servants of the Most High God. And I, I bless you with a revelation to, that you come to know what it is to be a servant of the Most High God. Of the Most High. One who worships Him. One who is owned by Him. One who walks in His, his power and might and authority. And it only becomes, only comes that way because we've laid down our lives and he owns us. And, and we say, hallelujah, he owns me. It's a good thing. It's the best thing. As we go forward as a church and as individuals, God wants to renew our passion for Christ. That was what he was, that was the word that was on my heart. When I sat down in front of the computer, I said, Lord, help me put this word together. Help me put it together. The word started flowing. And I'm thankful for it. And, and this is the word for us. This is not just another sermon Pastor Bill came up with. Have a passion for Christ, for Christ himself. How is your passion? How is your passion? Pray with me. Father, Lord, we give our lives to you as much as we know how. Lord, uh, teach us to give our lives for you. Teach us, oh God. Yes. 
Lord, we want to belong to you. We want to have you own us straight up without apology. Own us, oh God. Take control of these lives, Lord. Uh, we lay them at your feet as much as we know how. Help us to seek you and not just your blessings. You, not just your hand. But we understand you give us, you bless us anyway, because that's what you enjoy. Help us to enjoy seeking you, finding you. Help us to enjoy finding you. Lord, forgive us. Your word said, uh, those uh, that you love, you discipline, so uh, be diligent and, and repent. Lord, forgive us for misplacing our priorities. Lord, for getting all bent out of shape over the stuff that we want rather than seeking you first. Lord, we can get kind of crazy sometimes when we get our priorities out of whack. Forgive us and straighten out our perspectives so that you were the main goal. You were the main goal. Lord, we seek you. We seek your face. Let that be the priority, the, the motivating factor that helps us worship you, oh God. And Lord, we thank you. In happiness, Take us over. Fill us with your spirit. Lead us, guide us. We give ourselves to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, as we watched that video <coughs> during the offering, where they were just worshiping the Lord, Worshiping the Lord. One of the things that helps us worship like that, and Christians all over the country worship like that. We are too. One of the things that, that, that prompts that type of worship is the fact that people are seeking Him. Okay? Not whatever their concept of worship was. Uh, talking to God, singing to God. No, they are seeking Him. They're blessing Him. They're focusing on Him. It's not about us. And so often I find people are unable to just let go and worship the Lord because they're still worried about them. Okay, if you're worried about you, you won't you can't focus on him. You gotta get, we gotta get past that. Withholding nothing, I can give it all to you. I can give it all to you. Father, we thank you. Help us to do that. Help us, help us to give it all to you. Help us to see you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, in Jesus. Amen.